Now a new travel warning. Two women were drug drugged and assaulted while on vacation in the Bahamas, unaware the State Department had issued a travel advisory in the area. Eva Pilgrim has a story. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, George. These two moms say they thought they were doing all the right things to be safe. They were in a pair. They didn't take drinks from strangers. They weren't drinking in excess. But this morning, they say their drinks were drugged at a Bahamian resort and they were attacked. The FBI now investigating. Amber Shearer and Dengalia Dobson were on their first kids-free vacation on board a carnival cruise. We've been best friends for over 20 years, and we decided we were going to make this our girls' trip. On the last day of their trip, they stopped at a local resort on Grand Bahama Island, a resort they say the cruise ship recommended. Once there, the mothers claimed they were offered a two-for-one drink, which they accepted, but immediately fell ill. After the first drink, we had to get out of the ocean because we noticed that it was just hitting so hard. I just felt so out of it. Shearer and Dobson say they lost consciousness and allege that after drinking the drugged cocktails, members of the resort staff sexually assaulted them. I vaguely remember glimpses of his face. I don't remember all of it. I don't remember everything, but I remembered enough of that he was a staff worker and he had a goatee and he was a local that the resort security were able to go pull the footage and identify them right then and there. They say there were bruises on their legs and that they tested positive for various drugs. The Royal Bahamas police posting on Facebook confirming two men were arrested for sexual assault of two women and that an investigation is underway. Shear and Dobson say that's not enough. They're back in the U.S. demanding justice. The State Department issued a level two travel advisory for the Bahamas in late January due to an increase in homicides Hello everyone. and sexual Excesso violence. Hello everyone. reactions and reviews here. Today. I came across a rather concerning story about two mothers who embarked on a girl's trip, seeking some time away from their husbands and children. However, their vacation took a distressing turn when they encountered two resort staffers during a cruise. Allegations were made against these men, painting a picture of danger that seems to be pervading our world. This is crazy. I made a video last night about these two moms from Kentucky who were on a carnival cruise and made a stop at Grand Bahama. And apparently two of the staff members there slipped some DRUGs into their drinks and then SA'd them. Well, the resort and the cruise line is saying that their story is completely wrong and that they made this whole thing up. So the resort is called Pirate's Cove and they have 16 cameras around the resort and it basically captured everything. And this account on the Book of Faces has a video that's just full of information. But basically, they said upon further review of their surveillance videos, the allegations made on site and in subsequent social media posts and news stories conflict with what the time-stamped surveillance videos contain. As such, the lengthy videos of all concerned have been handed over to the local police and will be shared with our industry partners as needed. And then the resort goes on to say that the two guys were terminated, but because they violated the zero tolerance policy. However, there's a twist in the tale. It appears that these men weren't terminated due to any misconduct towards the women, but rather for actions that violated company policy and resort rules, as revealed by surveillance footage. Yet, the narrative spun by these women, portraying themselves as innocent victims, raises some serious questions. I find myself pondering the motivations behind such false accusations. Could it be regret from a reckless encounter? Or perhaps a misguided attempt at financial gain through lawsuits? It's troubling to witness the ease with which such accusations can ruin lives, especially considering the lack of evidence in many cases. Furthermore, the issue extends beyond individual incidents. There's a systemic problem where false allegations are taken at face value, while the accused suffer irreparable damage to their reputation and livelihoods. The imbalance in how these cases are handled, with victims' identities protected even when proven false, perpetuates a harmful cycle. I'm particularly disheartened by the racial and economic dynamics at play in this story. The privilege afforded to these white, affluent women, coupled with the societal bias towards believing them, highlights the pervasive inequalities that still exist. This incident underscores the dangers of unchecked feminism and its potential to weaponize victimhood for personal gain. It's essential that we demand accountability and evidence in such cases to prevent further injustices. Here's a timeline according to their footage. The girls entered the property at 8.17 in the morning. They were greeted by staff at 824. Then at 940, one of the girls met with one of the guys who's being accused. Then at 1006, you can see them. Looks like they're walking arm in arm with these two guys. They were headed towards the western side of the beach where the alleged incident took place. 
Now check out this video and then listen to what they have to say about it. Refuse to let us see a U.S. physician or refused a carnival to, physician. Refuse to let us have a rape kit done immediately. Made us go to the bathroom. Like, but Guys, they wouldn't even give us a rape kit after we had been raped. They refused. They made us go to the bathroom and use toilet tissue. And they collected toilet tissue as their specimens. And then they did an alcohol test on us like we were just super drunk. We had hardly any alcohol in our system at all. Well, the resort says that their EMS offered medical assistance to both of the girls, but they declined and even signed a waiver. And then they left for the cruise ship in a private vehicle. But knowing the gravity of the incident, their officers boarded the cruise ship, providing an SA kit and hospital form to the ship's medical doctor. So that's completely different than what the girls are saying. And just to throw in there, there is now a GoFundMe with a $10,000 goal. Apparently it's to help raise money for medications that they need that help prevent certain diseases. As we navigate these complex issues, it's crucial to remember that genuine victims deserve our support and justice. However, we must also safeguard against the exploitation of false accusations, which only serve to deepen divisions and perpetuate harm. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to follow me on social media for more discussions like these. Until next time, take care.